And depending on which poll you believe, the 2016 presidential race is going to be either a blowout or a dead heat. Yeah, so why do the polls never seem to agree? And what's being done to make them more accurate? Joe Tui has the inside story in tonight's Big Idea. In 2016, political candidates live and die by the latest poll numbers. If you're ahead, they're your greatest ally. And now I'm leading in every single poll. If you're behind, they're constantly wrong. Poll after poll says Sanders can't win on election day, we do win. Good poll numbers can fuel media coverage and fundraising, turning candidates into front runners. Bad poll numbers can do just the opposite. But like the campaigns that bad poll numbers tend to throw into turmoil, some say political polling itself is at a crossroads. A scientific poll traditionally has meant that Basically, everyone in the population has had a chance of being sampled for the survey. And historically, this was uh, very possible by sampling and dialing telephone numbers. It used to be pollsters could use automatic dialers to quickly connect with people on their home phone. But the rise of cell phones coupled with a 1991 law that made it illegal to use automatic dialers to call people on them have made polling as we've known it much tougher to do. They have to be handled by interviewers and it's gotten maybe three or four times as expensive as it used to be just two elections ago. Cell phones also make it much harder to reach certain parts of the population, potentially ruining what pollsters call the probability sample. And while many see all this amounting to a death warrant for traditional telephone polling, Doug Schwartz disagrees. You know, polls up to this point using telephones um, have been very accurate, and we see no reason to, con to stop doing it. He's the director of the Quinnipiac poll, one of the most well-known and respected traditional polling institutions in the country. If we weren't calling people on their cell phones, we would have a huge problem. We would be underrepresenting, you know, young people, young, underrepresenting um, Hispanics. There, it would be. Our polls would be so skewed, I would not trust them. But we're not. We're calling cell phones. On a typical night, all 150 terminals here at Quinnipiac's polling center are filled. It gives you an idea of the kind of manpower that's required to conduct what they say is the gold standard of polls. The issue is money. And yes, it's expensive to conduct a gold standard poll. And those climbing costs have given us a glimpse into what the future of election polling will look like. The future of polling is going to go to the Internet and almost all polling will be done on the internet four years from now. But like many new technologies, online polling still has a way to go. The problem with, with doing internet polling right now is, is twofold. First is not everybody's online. And second is that there's no good way yet to do a probability sample where everybody has a known chance of being included in the sample of web-based users yet. And so there's a lot of non-probability samples being done this election. And those have very little basis in science. Companies like SurveyMonkey and YouGov, as well as big name polling institutions like Pew Research Center, all working on the secret sauce to have online polls meet scientific muster. In some cases, this can mean using the tried and true dial up method to bring people over to the new online polling world. We talked to people on the phone and then we migrated them online to do monthly surveys. So that's kind of a nice hybrid where you're getting the online measurement in a timely manner. Um, but we know from the way that we recruited those people that that is, is nationally representative. And once online polling finally hits its stride, some experts say there's really no limit to the kind of information it can provide. Instead of being an episodic thing like it is now, a poll comes out, it will just be there as a data stream. Uh, and we'll probably get there by 2020, certainly by 2024. 2024, um, I don't even know what to tell you about polls. We may have other ways to measure public opinion than than calling people up and asking them. And until that day, it's worth remembering that just because someone is ahead in the polls at any one point, it doesn't guarantee a win in November. Just ask President Mitt Romney, President John McCain, President John Kerry, and, oh wait, Joe Tuohy, Fox 5 News.